Hi, welcome to the Big Bear Homestead. And today we're going to talk about poisonous plants for your cows. Hi, I'm Jason from the Big Bear Homestead. And if this is your first time visiting our channel, welcome. And if you want to learn about everything homesteading, whether it's taking care of livestock, food preservation, gardening, predator control, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button and don't forget the bell. We would appreciate it. So let's get back to today's topic. Can your pasture kill your cow? And unfortunately, the answer to that is yes, it can. In fact, pastures or vegetation poisoning is the leading cause of a lot of deaths in pasture-raised animals. Now, the sad thing is, or the difficult thing is, is that unless you're like a botanist, you're gonna have a very hard time figuring out which of these plants are dangerous to your livestock. So let's take a second and let's focus on the symptoms that some of these plants may cause in your animals before we talk about the plants. All right, so let's talk about some of the symptoms that your cows may show. Now, if you guys have been following this cow series, you'll remember that we talked about, in the raising cattle video, we talked about the overall health of what to look for in a cow. I'm gonna link that right here in this card up here so you can go back and refresh your memory. But one of the things that you're going to want to look at was one of the things that we talked about in that video. The cow, your cow or your horse or goat or whatever that you may have out there when we're talking about vegetation poisoning, he may look depressed. So that means the ears are going to be droopy, the eyes are going to be sunken in. Okay? He's just going to look sad. <clears throat> Another symptom of vegetation poisoning is, is you're not going to have to they're not going to be up moving around. You're going to have a hard time getting them to get up and move around. It kind of goes hand in hand with the depression thing. Another sign is you're going to see a lot of saliva. You should see a lot of saliva or what they call like foaming. Almost like how when people picture rabies, they think of the, they automatically, when, when you say the R word, people automatically think of the mad dog Cujo strand with all the foam and froth coming out around their mouth. Okay, you may see that as well on your cows. Another thing you may see is labored breathing. Their pa breathing patterns can become irregular. They'll, they'll, their overall, their coat will start to lose a little bit of its, of its shine. They'll just start to look sick. And of course, if you walk out there one day and, it's, and your cow is dead, that's also a sign, but we don't really want to talk about that. So now that we kind of went over the signs of vegetation poisoning, let's kind of talk about the plants. Okay, so we covered the symptoms. Okay, now let's talk about the plants. This is where you might get upset with me, but hey, don't hit the thumbs down button. Plants differ from region to region. So I honestly don't know what poisonous plants you'll have on your homestead. See, down here, I have to worry about things like nightshade, hemlock, mayapple, and bracken fern. You may not have any of those in your neck of the woods. You may have something completely different. So this is where you're gonna have to to go out, you're gonna to have to talk to your local county extension agent. He should have a list of poisonous vegetation for your area. You're gonna to have to do a little research, okay? Like, for example, the nightshades that we have to worry about down here, with overseeding and mowing, we can get rid of it. It'll, when you overseed with a different grass, whether it's a winter rye, or a fescue or a Bermuda, it'll get, especially the Bermuda, 
because the Bermuda is a very aggressive grass, it'll choke it out. Now, the bracken fern, on the other hand, that is one that we would have to go either nuclear on and spray, or as soon as it got into the pasture, dig it up and dispose of it, like burn it. So depending on what poisonous plants you have in your area, will then determine what type of treatment or action that you will have to take to get rid of those plants out of your pasture. Now granted, a lot of the animals naturally know to kind of stay away from some. But if you have a drought or your grasses start to die back due to weather, it gets too wet and they are left nothing else left to eat. They will eat these and then they will get sick and eventually if they eat too much, depending on their body weight and their size, they can die. So it's good to always go out to your pasture and walk it. That's your number one preventative tool. If you see a plant that you don't know what it is, take a picture of it. Go, you try to look it up on the internet. From my understanding, there's even, even an app out on your phone now that if you take a picture of it, this app can help you identify the plant. If not, then somebody needs to make that app. <laughs> take that picture to your local county extension agent or to your closest agricultural college. Somebody there will know that plant and they'll be able to lead you in the right direction. Tell them that you want to use organic methods first, and then they'll lead you in the right direction, whether it's going to be mowing, digging it up, pulling it, or if there's, if there's really nothing that you can do, and if it's an invasive plant, you may have to resort to some type of an herbicide. I know we don't want to use that word, and we don't want to talk about it, but sometimes with certain invasive plants, you have to go nuclear. I hope you guys found this video informative and helpful. If you guys have any questions about poisonous vegetation, leave them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them in any way, shape, or form. If you run across a plant in your pasture that you can't get anybody to identify, send me the picture. You can send it to me at bigbearfarms at hotmail.com. As Big Bear Farms at hotmail.com. I'll put that right across the bottom here somewhere. Send it to me. If I can't identify it, I know some people that can. Well, that does it for this week's video. Stop! Don't click off just yet. I almost forgot because we're doing something new. Instagram has come up with IGTV. And this is where we can put videos on our Instagram feed and they can be filmed vertically with your cell phone. So what we're doing is with every video that we put out here on YouTube, our Carol Ann is going to be filming on a cell phone, the behind the scenes footage. So for all the bloopers and outtakes and, and all of that, head on over to Instagram. It's still Big Bear Homestead on Instagram. Find us there on the IGTV part. If you're already with us on Instagram, you're automatically linked. If not, go on over there and start an Instagram feed and check out some of the bloopers and the outtakes. Now I can say thanks for coming by the Big Bear Homestead and like always, have a nice day. <laughs>